Yes. Uh, Michaela, do you have a question? No, I just made a drawing over the past days. Can I can I see it? Let's look at your drawing first. Uh, I just I just made it in a couple of minutes. Actually, that a couple. Of Let's see it anyway. I didn't. Oh my goodness! Look at the hands playing the piano. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, do you think you'll add any shading or no? Mm, probably not. This is actually for my piano teacher. Oh, it's a gift. Yeah, I know how to play the piano really well. Yeah, no, I, I, I. That does not surprise me. How many years have you been playing? How many years have you been playing? My go for one year. Sweet. Um, well, sometimes maybe, sometimes maybe you can play for us. Um, Joseph, how are you doing? Toby, how are you doing? Good. Good. It's good to see you. Is your sister going to help today? What did she say? Is your sister going to help out and sketch today? I don't know. <laughs> um, sorry. It's all good. Make sure you say hi to your family for me. All right, let's Joseph, let's get down to business, man. Let's do it. Um, so we're gonna build a square, but it's like a tile. Um, and when I say a tile, I mean, um, usually tiles are made of clay and they often have really sharp edges. And in order to like make the people that use the tiles uh, safer, they'll actually sand down the corners and they'll sand down the edges. So because it was designed um, to be a tile, um, you can see the corners, they're kind of dull and they're, they're sanded down. So um, as you build your square, um, just be aware um, of the fact that, you know, each side should be equal. If it's not perfectly equal, it's okay. This is just a warm up. Hopefully some of you guys have been drawing today, um, but you know, some of you may not have drawn anything today. So um, just practicing your straight lines, practicing trying to get um, lines the same length. It's, uh, it's just a healthy way to begin. So as you can tell, even as I'm sketching this one, my corners are sharp. You know, they do not have rounded, rounded moments. So I, if you could, I could actually even use a straight line to almost, in my mind, cut off the corner. And I still haven't even used any curves yet. So cutting those corners off, they always say don't cut corners. And I think they mean that in terms of your effort, which is a good idea. Um, but if you're dealing with sharp objects that you don't want to hurt, uh, to cut anybody, um, cutting corners is a good idea. All right, well, here we go. I'm pretty confident with my, with my square and I'm just gonna shore up some of my lines. Now I could lighten it a little bit, but you guys know, I mean, color pencils, it's once you've, once you've pressed down, it's really difficult to erase. And of course you can erase, but um, you know, it, it's, they're generally not erasable. Well, you should think about them as if they're not erasable. All right, I'm gonna switch colors. I'm gonna show you, maybe a lavender? No, no. This is a blue green. So I might try another blue green, but might make it a little bit, like a little bit greener, um, almost like the background for my flower. I haven't quite decided what color I'm gonna make the flower, um, but maybe the background. So watch what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna build my, my, the beginning of my frame, knowing that if you look in the corner where the tip of the, I, I got the tip of the um, flower um, is going, you know, the, the, I guess what I'm saying is the inner frame is not solid. The outer frame is a perfectly solid line. The inner frame it has the same width. So I'm gonna make these lines extra light um, because I know that I'm not going to be able to use them dark the whole way. All right. These corners, believe it or not, those are rounded as well. Each corner is rounded. Cut that corner off a little bit. Hopefully you can see my frame. It's like, it should be very faint. And that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I find it easier to start in the middle when I'm drawing flowers. And since this is perfectly symmetrical. Um, I think it's really important, everybody, if we find the middle, let's find the very middle of our rectangle. And so we know by putting the middle of our square 
rectangle, whatever you want to call it. By finding the middle of that, now we know that the stem is going to be in the middle. And we also know that the, the main leaf is also going to be in the middle. So let me just try to find the thickness of my stem. So I'm just going to estimate, use my, just use my regular eyes. I'm going to see um, the width of the stem of our flower. And if mine looks like it might be a little bit wide, I don't know. I don't care. Um, this is my flower. Um, I'm more concerned that it is, um, you know, say the same on both sides. I'm, I'm not really trying to copy this one exactly. All right. So the corner, as the, the stem goes into the ground, we get the, you know, the beginnings of this background shape. Look at this interesting shape right here. It looks almost like a pipe or it looks like a shoehorn or something like that. There's this, the dark shape on the side and we want the, that dark shape to be very similar to that dark shape. So you can think about it two ways. One way you could think about it like you're drawing the stem then you're drawing the base of the um, petal and the petal curls up in the corner and then it goes up, not quite to the top, but close to the top. <clears throat> so let's see, okay, so our stem, you know, cuts the corner, goes into the ground. So I see where the ground is. Then I can see the bottom of the petal on the left. And then, you know, a little far, a little farther in, it turns the corner and starts to go up from the base of the petal to the side of the petal. And if you see how high the petal goes on one side and the other, you just try to connect it. I'm remember, I'm trying to keep my, um, I'm trying to keep my lines really light, you know, so I can, I can adjust them. Nice. So I'm thinking of two things. I'm thinking about the base of the petal and that they, that, that lines up both sides look even. And I'm also thinking about this shape. I mean, I'm actually thinking about the background shape and I want to make sure that that's similar as well. So we've got two things going on. We've got the shape of the background on the bottom. And then we also have the edge of the flower and the stem. So we have the flower petal and the stem. It's kind of interesting. Um, so now that I'm thinking about it, it looks like there's four total shapes. We have two shapes in the bottom that are mirror images of each other. And then we have two shapes on the top that are also mirror images of each other. Oh, hey, family. <laughs> How's it going? All right. So here we go. Um, we can start from the middle again, like we normally do. That's why the center line is so important. So the center line of the, the stem can match the, um, the petals on the top. So I got my right side of the petal and the left side of the petal. And so that's the, the curving dome of the middle petal, left side petal, right side petal. And then we have the top of the petal on the right. So I'm just gonna spring that curve. It's gotta be below the corner, um, but not that far. It's amazing, it actually comes the, the top of that petal comes dangerously close to the corner. It's fascinating. All right, that looks good. So I've got the um, top of the petal that hits the, the inner border and then it's, you know, hits a crack and then it springs up towards the tip of the other petal that you don't actually see the tips of any of the petals. The actual tip where they can join is not is off screen. You don't even see them. Um, but then again, you know, these, the, as the, the, the petals uh, turn into the background, you know, they're, they're really soft. You know, there's a, they, they curve into the background uh, border. They don't, um, it's not a sharp edge. There's just curve, there's curves everywhere in this. Not that there's not straight lines, but every straight line that you see always transitions with a curve. It's actually very elegant. All right, cool. So I, I feel pretty confident with my symmetry here. I might uh, try to shore up my line, you know, because the, the border line, um, the border and the flower, um, those are the darkest lines in the picture and everything else is gonna be a, um, you know, a, a lighter tone and we'll be able to shade. 
Um, shading is when you think about you know black and white, and that's what they did. The, the, the background is darker, the flower is lighter, and then the border is the lightest. So we really, when you think about shading, there's just the back, the, the, the background shapes are the darkest, the flower's middle, and then the frame is a little bit lighter still. So that's not that hard. It's just like dark, medium, and light. Um, but what one thing for sure, the outline of all of it is the is probably is the darkest mark. Okay, uh, cool. Maybe I'll make a a light blue. I'll, 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 because of the pencil, I can just go really lightly. Even though this is the same color as the background, I can make the background really light because I'm just not pressing very hard. So the, the outside line is this dark blue and then the border will be a lighter inside line, softer. And that's about learning you know, how to control your color pencils. It's just, they, they don't, in some ways they don't even look like the same color just because it's the outline, outside line is so much darker. And now the exciting thing is we have two more colors to choose. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I'll keep the background color green. And the question is, what am I gonna make the flower? Maybe I'll make the background shapes a light green. I don't think that's gonna hurt. And I like that it's at least the same color as the outside line. So I'm keeping that theme going with a dark outside line and a light shade in the middle. I think I'm gonna choose a different color for the stem, and a different color for the flower. I found this color for the stem, it's called Espresso. So should it be a different color green? Maybe it should be a, a, a bright green. Let's do a bright green. I was thinking brown, like it was the trunk of a tree, but it's not the trunk of a tree. It's the stem of a flower. So the stem of the flower is going to be, oh my goodness, it's called light green. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. I said, should I use light green? And then I picked up a color and it was exactly, it was named light green. I love it when it happens like that. All right, here's my light green stem. This is the only green in the whole picture that, um, this, yeah, that's the light green. There's no border lines or anything. <clears throat> and then I think my very first color was, uh, was some kind of violet. And this one is called Imperial Violet. I think it might be, a, it might be, if I press too hard, I think it'll be too dark of a, um, a purple, but I think I'm gonna keep it really light. <laughs> yeah, Imperial Jedi or Imperial Guard. Okay, hold on. I got. I saw. What? Who is? Who is? Uh, Darth Vader. Is he in charge of who? Is it the Imperial Forces? Pretty much. Yeah, the Empire Strikes Back. He's the Empire. He's not Jedi, right? Well, he was Jedi, but now he's. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna mute myself because I should first stop talking about. All right, now I'm back on. I, I, I spared you the sound of my electronic pencil sharpener. All right, so I'm wondering, I'm doing the, uh, this is the violet, the imperial violet. And I might notice that I center line on there is really light. I'm hoping that my imperial violet will be able to cover that up. And it does a little bit. I can still see it a little bit. <clears throat> um, what I love about the, the, the this drawing exercise is that there's not there's no texture. It's just outline and color. And I think it's important to know that when you're drawing, you know the drawings are always kind of in preparation for painting. You know, and the sometimes the people just like they'll just draw and draw and draw and draw and draw, and then they never like get to the painting or they get to they never get to the colors. And like, you don't want to spend your whole life waiting to get to the colors. Like you, the colors are so beautiful and so rewarding and so enriching that, um, oh, here I go. This is like, believe it or not, this is my second layer. Can you tell how like the middle up here is a little bit darker? The Imperial is a little darker. 
Um, I think I might do a second layer, a little bit heavier with the Imperial, and then I might come over it with a really light violet so that I can mix the two together so there's not as much white. And I'm almost, I'm almost gonna blend my violet um, with another color. Maybe sky blue light it might soften everything. And you guys will get the hang of uh, color pencils and see how they blend and you can make it your own. Let me mute it because I have to sharpen this pencil. It's definitely getting time for me to um, empty out my pencil shavings. I've let it go too long. Wait till you see the next piece we're gonna do. We're gonna do a composition. Um, it's gonna be a mama bird and her babies in a nest. And it's, um, there's a worm and there's a nest and there's a flower and a branch. And then we can probably add even more exciting things. I was moved. I saw it and I was like, that is a good piece of art. Okay, so here I go. I, you may not be able to see this, but I can see it. And I'm blending with this sky white. I'm really softening up my purple. I'm trying to work my purple into the, um, into kind of the valleys, kind of like the deeper, the deeper crevices uh, in between the fibers of the paper. And this sky blue, I might, it might be helpful to just do that everywhere. It might be a, a you know, one of these, you know, a unifying color, but there's a little bit of sky blue in each one of my spaces, even the background. It does blend nicely. Yeah, and oil pastels, in oil pastels, they have a, um, like a clear, it's actually kind of a, it's just like, like, it's like the wax, it's just like oil pastel wax that has no pigment, and you use that to blend um, your oil pastel colors. Look how much darker the blue became. So this is the second layer of blue on my border, and I'm not regretting it. It's, it's, it's unifying. It's really unifying the, uh, the outline. Should I do the stem? All right, I did the stem. I did the stem. All these colors are really soft, really, really pleasant. It, they're all very cool too. My, my color choices, you know, the soft violet, you know, cool violet, cool violet, you know, this cool blue green, um, a soft yellow green, you know, light green. Um, this would look really good if there was a, if there was a, um, like a ladybug in here. Cause I need some kind of, I need some kind of yeah, a red note, like a bright warm to make the, uh, to make all the other colors work. I don't think I can put one on here. Should I do it? Should I put a little ladybug? A soft pink lady. I was thinking I could put a ladybug right here on the stem or right here on the petal. What do you think? Should we vote on it? Ladybug, Joseph, you know. I think I'm going to take a risk. Can I take a risk? Or mine red. I do have a softer red. Or a pink. Pomegranate. All right, here comes my pomegranate. Little teeny ladybug. Does it look like a ladybug? I gotta put some spots on him. Ladybugs have white and black heads. I know that they have black. Hmm. They've got black spots too. There's a black head. The head is a mixture of the pattern of white and black. I know. I don't know how to get white though. <laughs> oh man, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. I think it's kind of cute. I, it may not actually work, but 
you know, I think it, I, sometimes you got to take risks. This is, if there's ever a place where you can take a risk, it's with a, it's with a drawing. Because if I turn this into a painting, I don't have to put it on. I just wanted to see it. I was experimenting. <laughs> can I see how you guys did? How far along are you? Are you already done? Mm, great. <clears throat> Yellow background, Joseph. Phenomenal. Toby, great. See how nice it works just with black and white? Michaela, I like the green. Yeah, good choice on the backgrounds, guys. The yellow green is really good. Yeah, you can ask a question. I also drew another one. Ooh, that rose. That's what I was going to say. I was like, Michaela probably drew three of them. <laughs> two, two is good. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. <clears throat> okay. Well, we have to switch over pretty soon. I know that you're not quite done coloring, but you can always color this in on your own time. Um, there's a lot going on um, in the composition. And I actually, I haven't sketched it myself. So we can talk about maybe what the best strategy is. Um, to, I had, I basically, let me show you what, I'll show you what it looks like and then we can talk about it. <clears throat> So it's a lot of information, but it's, it's all doable. It's all like, it's all very, it's all very friendly, I guess is what I mean. Um, whether you've drawn all of them, all of these things or none of them. Um, oh, let me move this over. Okay, so I got more room. Good. So it looks like I might have to sketch a little bit on the smaller side. So that's okay. I don't mind doing that. Um, okay, so let's talk about what's going on here. Um, there is, let me put, lift up this side too, hold on. Yeah, it should be mostly level. All right, so we got a mama bird. Um, the mama bird um, is standing up in, in profile. So really all we have to worry about is the side of the bird. So there's like an, an oval for the, there's an egg shape for the belly. There's an uh, oval for the head. And then there's a triangle for the beak. There's an eye, there's a neck that connects them you know, the wings and then the tail, the legs and then the feet. Um, we'll figure out those shapes. So I'm not actually concerned about the bird. Um, we'll do it step by step. What I'm most concerned about is what should we do first? Do we do the bird first and then put the bird on the, you know, on the um, nest and then and then we'll do the birds, you know, the three little chicks, you know, they the chicks are, the chicks are actually easy too. They have a circle for the head, triangles for the open mouth, and then a dot for the eye. That's really it. Like you can see like a little bit of the wing, like the, the curving wings, but really not much. I mean, really it's like head, neck, mouth, and the head is a circle, the eyes a circle, the neck is a rectangle, the mouth is just two triangles. I mean, um, it seems like it's complicated because we've seen g birds in motion, but in terms of drawing it, the shapes are kind of easy. Now, so we got the mom and we got the three birds. Um, and they all kind of happen above, they're all happening above the nest. So like the birds come out of the nest, the moms resting on the top of the nest. And then essentially we have everything that's like from the top of the nest down. And the, and the nest is like sitting on a branch, which is fine. And then there's some twigs that are coming off the branch. And then from the twigs, you get the leaves. And that's how, and that's how all trees go. We've gone over that before. It's like the trees, you know, have trunks, then the trunks turn into boughs and the boughs turn into branches and then the branches turn into twigs. So we're kind of like zoomed in. We have a branch and then we have these a bunch of little twigs and there's a lot of flexibility with the twigs. We can put the twigs kind of like wherever, which way we can add more, we can subtract them. Um, I don't think it's really based on observation. Now, I think this might be, is this an oak tree? You know, with these leaves, they have like you know, they have the center line and then they have like kind of curved orbs. Um, let me just do a quick one right here. Um, I think this is what the tree looks like. You get the stem, they have a rounded top and then they have these swellings as they come down. So there's like a curve, a curve, a third curve, and then it turns into that. That is basically, you know, it's got a rounded top and then three bulbs on the right three bulbs on the left. And, you know, mostly it's, you know, you, once you follow the, once you follow the angle of the middle, you know, then you find the, the, the tip and then one, 
two, three into the stem, one, two, three into the stem. And if we just keep it green, you know, it's not going to be that they're all, they're, they're all essentially the same. They just face in different directions, face left, face right, but they are, you know, in front of the branch and in front of the nest. That's, the, that's, that's the wild part. So um, we have to draw the, we kind of have to draw the leaves first. Um, but I think that's going to happen second. Let's, let's just, um, let's draw, because if you look at this line, if you look at the top of the nest, all of the birds take place above the nest, and then we can draw the nest second. So I think what we should do, um, I think we should draw a horizontal line to begin with, and that horizontal line is going to represent the top of the nest. Then we'll be able to put the birds, you know, feet on this corner, and then we'll be able to draw the, the, the baby birds sticking their heads out. Um, and then we'll just worry about the birds and the birds could be like, you know, on a table or whatever. Like, it's just a straight line. We'll just worry about the birds first. And then once that's done, we're like, oh, yay, this is going to look good. Then we'll say, okay, then we'll draw these leaves. Then we'll draw the, le the nest. And then last, we'll draw the branch. And again, this picture is cropped. So it's like a really small rectangle. You could expand on it further and make the rectangle a little bit different. We could put you know, a moon up here, you know, in the sky, we could put mountains in the background. There's all kinds of stuff we could do. Okay. Thank you for listening to me talk through that. <laughs> I, I, I was like, we're going to draw these birds. And I was like, but I have no idea how we're going to do it. I usually practice first. Um, but this is such a good group. And I was like, I'll figure it out. <clears throat> And it's more exciting, honestly. That's why I tell my um, that's why I tell my adults. I'm like, I'm like, I've never drawn this before, but it's more exciting that way. So, like, thank you for doing this. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna draw a straight line, and this is represents the top. And you can even make it wiggle a little bit if you want, because that's gonna be the top of the um, nest. And we're not gonna draw anything more than just the part of the nest that comes in front of um, the birds. Good. Whew. I'm glad I talked my way through that. Um, all right, so unlike most times we would start, we would normally start with the body of the bird um, and then build the legs off of it. Let's just do the feet. Um, let's do the legs off of the um, bird, off of the nest because he's got to live on this corner. I have another sheet of paper that I can show, demo this. Um, the legs are really from ankle um, to the ball of the foot. And then the ball of the foot, you have three toes in the front and then one in the back. That's kind of like the universal bird foot. So you can see the leg right here. So these are feathers up here and they attach to you know the body, of course. Um, but you get the, this is actually the heel, technically the heel. And it goes from the heel of the foot to the ball of the foot. And you know, that's if you were to stand on your tippy toes, you, when you stand on your tippy toes, the, 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 the pad that's near the front of your toes, that's what they stand on all the time. And then you, they've got four toes, one in the back, the big one's in the middle that has a talon, and then there's one on the left and then one on the right. They all have talons. You don't have to worry, you can't really see that, they're not showing it, um, but I want you to know that. Okay, so let me just go back and then there's of course two legs and you don't really see the other one. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this leg up I'm gonna use a little rectangle. Um, those are for the feathers that make up the, uh, from the knee to the ankle. I can do like my feet, one in the front, one in the middle, two on the side and one in the back. And again, we're, this guy's resting on a, you know, on the corner of the nest right here. All right, <clears throat> here comes the best part in my opinion. It's the best part because um, I find it the easiest because it's the biggest shape. And however big you make this egg, which is really the rib cage, however big you make this oval, that's going to determine how big really your bird is. And you know, the, when you draw bird anatomy, it's actually pretty flexible because the bird's always moving, so they can always take different positions. Um, so yeah. Um, so once you do the rib cage. Um, we're going to come up here and do the oval of the head so that he's kind of tilting his head down 
And the the head is, um, you know, if you were to see like this is the middle of the, the rib cage, it goes at this angle. The middle of the head is going to be at that angle. So it's a it's an oval turn to the side. Oh, that's nice. Um, and that little that little curve that I put in there, that should guide us to be able to make the beak, which is a triangle. Sometimes it's a little dangerous to separate um, the head from the rib cage, you know, um, without, you know, anticipating the neck. But in birds, they're so close together and the feathers make it so, um, you know, there's no muscles in there. It's basically all feathers. It's a heck of a lot easier to connect the head to the rib cage uh, in a bird than basically any other animal. So, so just you do that, you know, do from like the, the chin of the, the, the beak, it curls in through the front of the neck into the chest. And then it goes from the back of the skull, it connects down into the, the back of the um, spine. <clears throat> you don't have, uh, whenever we're drawing animals, I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of doing the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. Well, the beak on birds is, you know, one of the first things you do because it's most prominent. So that's the mouth. And then the next thing to do is the eyes. And I like to use usually an almond shape just to at least place the eyes. And it's, you know, it's above the center line. You know, I put that, I put that curve there in the middle of the oval. Um, it's gonna help me place the eyes above that. Now, the weird part about um, birds is that they don't have like external ears. Um, they have, they can hear, they have ear canals and they have, you know, eardrums and everything. They, they chirp and they make sounds and they communicate, um, but their ear is kind of hidden um, probably for aerodynamics. Um, it's sunken and there's no drag. All the feathers are, um, you know, cover it. And you, basically we don't even see it. Sometimes you can see like a little indention or a little color change around where the ear is, but it's almost non-existent on the bird. Um, okay, so that's the, that's the, these are like the, the parts of the structure that, you know, are always going to be there. It doesn't matter what the feathers are doing or what the, the color of the bird is. All the birds have necks, rib cage, eyes, beaks. Um, and the last part is the tail. So you have to be careful of the difference between a tail and tail feathers. The tail, and if you look at, if you ever eat chicken or you get a whole chicken and you roast it, um, you can really see there's a triangular tip and it's a muscle. Um, the birds use the tail um, to guide them in flight and there are muscles attached to it um, that control the feathers and the feathers, you know, then control um, the way the bird travels through the atmosphere. Um, so this internal structure here is the tail, which is muscle. And now we can add, um, you know, an oval for the wing, which is uh, again, above center. And then, you know, I like to think about the wings as blades. You know, I'm, look at this triangle. It's like, you know, it's like a sharp knife. I like to think about like the birds cutting through the air. Um, and, you know, the, a knife blade is a good metaphor for the way birds um, slice through the air. And it really is, it kind of takes on that shape. Again, no feathers yet, no decoration yet. Um, we'll be able to put some, you know, some layers of feathers on there as we go. Um, now the tail, it depends on the different birds. It depends on their position. It depends on how they're flying. But for our purposes, um, you can kind of think about the tail as like a rectangle. See how long that tail is, you know, and it looks like there's a couple different feathers in there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we haven't started the coloring exercise yet. We're gonna, we're gonna get to it. We just have to, we have to like make the coloring book. We have to make all the lines for the coloring book before we kind of allow ourselves the, um, you know, the pleasure and the enjoyment of coloring. So next phase, I am going to test some colors up here. Ooh, that's nice. Mm, that's nice too. There's got to be another one. All right, so what I was just testing, I had, let me just show you this one. I had this bright yellow here and I'm like, is that bright yellow anywhere in the birds? It really wasn't. Um, then I had this yellow, which is kind of like a, a yellowish brown. And I was thinking I might use that for the body of the birds. 
And then I had this bright orange. I was like, where is that? And I'm seeing the bright orange in the beak. Um, and I'm like, and I'm, whether it's fully accurate, it's definitely close enough. So I have these two yellows. Well, one technically an orange, another's yellow. That's what I'm going to use for the birds. Let's see what they, let's see what the names actually are. I love how these people come up with names. Okay, golden rod. That's for the brown one, and yellowed orange. Okay, for the bright one. I can live with that. <clears throat> All right. I mean, it, it really doesn't get easier, and I hope I hope I don't. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be be smug, but you know, if you use a circle for the head, you use a curve for the neck, and then you show like a wing, you know, like a little wing. You know, that's the body of the bird. And then, you know, depending on the position of your triangles, will determine how the beak is open. Got a nice little eye right there. Okay. There's another one. So the, you know, it's in thirds. So this one looks up and to the left. The one next to it is a little bit lower. You can think about these birds um, almost like the Olympic, um, Olympic platform. So there's like one, two, three. So there's three tiers. I just drew the tallest one first. Now we'll do second place. I'll use a circle. I'll use a curve for the neck and then I'll get a wing and another wing. Triangle for the beak. <laughs> their, their mouth is like wide open because they're hungry. Um, that's tier one. The second one is tier two. And he's looking, you know, up and to the right. So one's looking up and to the left, other's looking up and to the right. And then the third one is looking straight up. Um, which, you know, these guys that this book that I took this from, these were the best art instructors in, of like from 18, probably from 1860, 1870, the best American art instructors from like 1860, 1870, all the way to like 1910. Let me see what year the book was written, <clears throat> at least when it was published. Um, so a lot of um, the best concepts from the last 200 years, right, okay. So it was published in 1905. So the people that wrote it have been teaching art for at least 50, 60 years at that time. So you're getting kind of, um, and that was when art education was at maybe its peak. Um, so you're kind of getting the, the best art education of the last 200 years, um, you know, dealing with this content. And one of the issues, one of the concepts that really good designers use all the time is theme and variation. So first place, second place, third, pay, third place, um, where you have, um, you know, if you have three objects, you have a pine cones, big pine cone, medium sized pine cone, small pine cone. You know, a pine cone that's really close, a pine cone that's in the middle, a pine cone that's far away. Um, and this artist knew this. So you've got the, the biggest bird, the second biggest bird, and then the third bird is so low that you don't even see the eye. So it's like long neck, short neck, and then really short neck. Hold on, I gotta mute you guys just for a second. Okay, we're back. Kristen's phone rang. Oh wow! I wonder if the um, we could look at the arrangement of these leaves in a very similar kind of way. Okay, cool. We've got our bird. We've got our three baby birds, and that's a color. That's a good coloring book. Um, are you guys ready to start the next three elements? Um, oh wait, not yet. We should do the worm. <laughs> I was, I was like, there's three elements above. I was like, there's three elements below. There's like the nest, the branches and twigs, I guess the tree and then the leaves. So there's four elements below. We'll call it that. We'll say the, the nest, the leaves, the twigs and then the branch. So there's four elements. Above, we've got the birds, we've got the um, baby birds, mama bird and then the worm. <laughs> All right, I gotta get another color for the worm earthworm color 
chestnut. I wish they had a color that was worm color. <laughs> but I guess I guess chestnuts are kind of wormy. Ooh, yeah. My the hmm. I might use two tones for this worm, but I'm gonna make this worm long. I'm happy with my worm. Yes. All right. Good. I am not that stressed right now. I feel like everything else can, oh, that's nice, Joseph. Good job, good work, really good work. I think the rest is just gonna be fun. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna do, uh, but just to get positioned, um, I'm going to very, very lightly um, block out the, uh, well, let's, let me show you this. Watch this for a second, I hope you guys don't mind. I actually got into, um, bald eagles really intensely. And I actually, I actually built a bald eagles nest. I followed the exact same process that a bald eagle did, but a tree came down in my backyard. So I had all these branches. And so I built a bald eagles nest. Anyway, I just want to show you what it looks like. So inside of the nest, it's a very soft cushion bowl. So it's kind of, it's kind of flat and cushiony. And then you get a series of sticks that, you know, run around and they, there's sticks that represent the top of the nest. And then what I'm talking about here is that there's sticks that represent the side of the nest. So it's, it's almost like a donut where you see the top and then you see the side or a tire or something. And then there's the inside. Okay. So that's, that's really, this is a very crude, this is a very crude drawing, but I, the point is that you can see the top of the nest and that's where the bird is standing right here. And then the babies are inside and I'll just put some eggs in there, you know, put three little eggs inside. And then what we're mostly seeing in our picture is the side of the nest. So if we had more accuracy, we would be seeing a very thin opening at the top with a little bit of the top of the back and then a little bit of the top in the front. So that this, this little line here, I'll, I'll shade it in. That's where the birds are coming out right here. And then we are seeing like marks that represent the side. Now, the annoying thing is, is that there's all these, well, it's not annoying, it's beautiful. There's all these beautiful leaves that keep getting in the way um, of the nest. So it's like the, there's an, the one that angles up here and then there's one that angles down here. And then the rest of the leaves really don't get in the way of the nest, but they do get in the way of the branch. So we follow the middle of the leaf then we'll do, you know, the rounded top, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then <clears throat> everything else is background. So then, you know, you can see this leaf, leaf up here and then you can see this twig that shuts out to the side, but that doesn't overlap anything. The one I'm most worried about is the one I'm shading in right now. That's the one that really covers up a big chunk of our, our nest. <clears throat> so you want to like kind of anticipate that. Does that make sense? Do you guys understand that part? Okay, cool. Um, so in the spirit of, um, of, you know, doing the right, <clears throat> in the spirit of getting the nest, I'm gonna draw, um, I'm gonna draw the side of the nest here. I'm gonna draw the side of the nest here. And I think we do get a little bit of the bottom of the nest where it touches the branch. And now I have to do the leaf. So there's the leaf, the center stem, and we'll get a rounded top. And we'll go, you know, one, two, three into the stem. One, two, three into the stem. <clears throat> and if you guys do a better job than me, please do. I, um, <clears throat> I find it easier to look at nature to draw so then this, this one has a companion one, a companion uh, leaf. So I find the middle, rounded tip, and then one orb, two orbs, three orbs into the stem. One, two, three into the stem. I'm happy. <clears throat> All right, now here's the other one. This one angles up. This one angles down and to the right. Then there's this other one that starts, who knows where it starts, but it looks like it's coming right out of the nest. Follow the center line down. 
one orb, and then one, two, three into the stem, one, two, three into the stem. The rounded tip is kind of key. <clears throat> if you make the if you make your um your leaves a little too big, that's okay. If you make them a little too small, it's okay too. I'm just filling that in just for fun. <clears throat> okay, there's nothing else really that's overlapping. Um, there's nothing else that's really overlapping our nest. So if you wanted to, you could start thinking about you know the texture. We're gonna to have to shade it in eventually, but I like offering texture. And there's these little branches that build the nest. <clears throat> Looking good, we're not, not fully doing coloring yet, but we're getting close. Okay, so I chose a, a, yet another color and I'm gonna do the branch. Top of the branch, bottom of the branch. And I can do some twigs, rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Here's some other twigs, another twig that's, that comes up, <clears throat> comes behind the bird. There's a twig that's at the corner, left side, right side, left side, right side. Small little twig, look at that. There's a little twig that comes out the bottom. Beautiful, a little twig that happens in between. <clears throat> that doesn't look right, why it would go at that angle, but who knows, maybe it comes down from this side. Small little twigs, teeny little stems. Look at that thing. Okay, so um, sometimes people, when I talk about composition, even like my high school kids, they're like, what do you mean composition? And really what it means is, is that you have lots of different kinds of things. Sometimes they're the same things. I mean, you could have like four apples, how you arrange the apples. Do you put them in a row? Do you move one closer? Do you stack them up high? That's kind of a composition, like how you arrange things. But usually when you do a composition, it refers to a, like a lot of different elements, you know, fitting together um, to describe a situation. And so this is, um, a mama bird feeding baby birds. That's like the scene. Um, but in order to express that, um, we're bringing together a nest, twigs, a branch, leaves, a mama bird, baby birds, a worm. <clears throat> so there's all those different things that are that we've had to fit together um, and work together um, to talk about um, you know this one beautiful event of a mother feeding their their their, their, their babies. And we've got, and we did it in less than 10 minutes. Oh, we did it with, with more, with what, with even more than 10 minutes left in, in the class. So I don't know if you can see this, but um, this picture is inside of a rectangle. So the only thing I would recommend is that maybe you think about where your rectangle might be. You don't have to commit to it, but you know, how much sky do you want <clears throat> up above? <clears throat> I'm gonna have a little bit more sky. I like having a little more room at the top of my picture. Um, I can come down to the side with the tail and then I'll come close to the bottom of this leaf. I could even make that, make that leaf come off the bottom of the page. So I'm thinking about it. And the reason I'm thinking about it, because I'm about to start my coloring. You, know, you, you, you pull out a page in your coloring book and that's what it is. It's the page. You, you, know, where the, you know where the composition ends because there's nothing else to color. Here, we have to define it for ourselves. And it could be, you could put this in a circle. Oh, that'd be so pretty. You know, if you put this bird inside of a circle, oh my gosh, look how cute that looks. I'm dying. Just kidding, no, I don't mean to be morbid. But I, I, I mean, it's, it's like sometimes when you look at a bird, um, a lot of times when I look at birds, they're through a, um, you know, through binoculars. And my binoculars are so weird. My, eye, my head is so big that a lot of times I can only like focus with one eye. You know, this, this, the, the, the pair that I have, the best pair that I have is too small for me. Um, 
anyway, sometimes I'm looking at this bird only through one eye and it's through a magnifying glass, which is the binoculars and it's in a circle. So maybe we do do a circle, <clears throat> but in the next eight minutes, I think we should just color, have fun. I mean, if your line work is there, you can make the, um, you know, we can shade the bird. The birds are very simple. You know, there's not a lot of uh, texture to the wings. There's not, um, you know, they all are kind of blended together. And I think that's the point. I think, I think in one way, even though there's three birds, they're really kind of like one, kind of like one entity, which, and there's not that many parts to them. So there's just the eye, the beak and the bodies. So I don't know why I started there. I started there maybe because I had the, I felt like it might've been easy. So I can see that the, the, the breast of this robin is a brown and then I can put in this, this soft brown tone knowing that I'll probably mix another color into it. And the beak for some reason is really dark. And the upper beak and the lower beak. And then they have these beautiful light patches I didn't see that until right now. There's these really wonderful light patches um, above and below the eye. Hmm. <laughs> so in order in order for my dark, in order for the dark of the bird to work, I drew like the, the light highlight around the eyes. So it was too big at first, but um, as I shade it, I should be able to come in and make them a little smaller. Coloring, coloring is, can be so natural just because everybody's had coloring books. So when you're coloring and you're shading these things in, just trust yourself. The same thing with painting. So much of drawing, so much of a painting is just getting a good drawing and then, you know, and then when you get into the painting part, like don't, like everybody colors, everybody can color. The colors actually don't matter a whole lot. I mean, they're just, it's a place where you can really have fun and play. I mean, we've, we've committed so much time to drawing, like let, like we can kind of ease up on the, uh, you know, on the seriousness, I guess. You know, if you want to make, if, you know, if you want to make, Make them have green nail polish, give them the green nail polish or whatever. <clears throat> Actually, that might not look good. I'm going for I'm going for naturalism here. And if they had green nails, either there'd be an infection or it belongs to somebody else and they painted the nails. Um, that belly, I made orange. I want to make it a little redder. So I'm going to mix another color into it. This is carmine. Oh, no, this is terracotta. So terracotta is actually like fired clay. And um, that's, that's the color. It's kind of an earthy red. And that's kind of the perfect color for this, for this bird. I think it's a robin. <laughs> a lot of the hard work was kind of done. I'm looking at the um, I'm looking at the nest. What color should I make the nest? It's maybe a different brown. Chocolate. Don't make me hungry. Here's a chocolate nest. I wonder if birds can eat chocolate. I know dogs can. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> my light worm color. I used a dark color for the outside of the worm. 
and then I used salmon pink for the inside. Let me ask you guys a question. Does this blue show up on Zoom? I'm shading its back. Or I'm, I'm shading the background. Barely. Yeah, very faint. It looks amazing on my drawing. It just it doesn't show up very much on the picture. I see you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Toby. Um, so in the last couple of minutes here, I'm kind of comparing my drawing to his drawing. I'm gonna kind of make some priorities. And I think I really do need to um, finish shape because the, the, the tree branch is so dark. I think I really need to shade that in. And I think I, I need to put in a couple extra leaves. One, one, two, three, four, That looks good. Yeah. Every, everything is kind of represented. I hope I did a, a good enough job coloring. Something tells me that I may need to darken my branch. If you look at the bottom of the branch that this artist made, the top of the branch is a light brown and then the bottom of the branch is a dark brown. And that really makes sense when you think about the light sources coming from up above. So the top of it's gonna be lighter and the bottom will be in shadow. So it's, a, it's, 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 it's kind of subtle, but once you see it, it all makes sense. Where's that other leaf from over here? Okay, the second coat on the green on the leaves looks good. I might hit it with a little of that yellow green <clears throat> to unify it. Was it light green or yellow green? Yeah, it was light green. I use the light green to blend it, and I'm happy with that color. It looks makes it look a little bit more like the the drawing in the picture, and I think it makes it a little happier. The green I chose is a little too dark, and this this lighter green makes it happier. It's kind of a happy scene. You know, if you get to, there's just a wonder. If you ever get to see this in person, it's just, it's like one of those things where you just, you, you realize how beautiful life is. Yeah, Toby. I finished mine. That's it, just in time. Four o'clock. Wow, that's amazing. That's so happy. You guys all got suns in there. I'm gonna put a sun in. Hold on, give me one second. Does that fall on the ground now? There it is. Okay. The sun looks so good. Oh, Michaela, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's really sweet. Let's see, Joseph. Okay. Oh, yeah, you extended it. <laughs> I love that branch. Man, this is a great class. This is a great one. This is a great one. All right, everybody. Um, yeah, keep finishing it. It's it's after four, so I got to go. Um, but keep working on it. And um, if you could have your parents send me pictures, I'd love to see it because those things are home runs. Uh, let me stop the share here and I will uh, I will see you guys next week. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Later, everybody. <laughs>